you spent your full name and spell your last name? Michael Chavis, C-H-A-V-I-S. Okay, where are you employed, sir? The City of Rock Hill Police Department. And what do you do with the City of Rock Hill Police Department? I'm the Executive Officer to the Chief and the Public Information Officer. What is a Public Information Officer's job? My job is to basically put out all the information to the media and anybody who requests, you know, public information short of four years. I do not handle four-year requests. Okay, so you do press releases for this? Yes, I do. And do you typically, when you're doing a press release based on something that occurred, um, do you often have first-hand knowledge of that? How do you find the information to write the press release? Usually I'm not on scene, um, so I don't have first-hand knowledge of everything that occurs. Okay. In order for me to develop a press release, I have to go off of what I'm being told, incident reports, and any video that I might watch or see. All right. Were you um, so employed back on June 23rd of 2021? Yes, I was. Okay. Do you remember the uh, major incident, what became the major incident at the corner of Confederate and Willow Hill? Yes, I do. Uh, and I believe, uh, what was the, you know, just in, in brief, a sentence or two, what was the overall impact of this incident on the Rock Hill Police Department that day? What do you mean by overall impact? I mean, what happened that the police department had to do with? Was this a significant event that the police department had to deal with? Uh, yes, it was. Okay. And as, as part of that response to the event, were you asked to, uh, to, to do something? Yes, I was asked to issue a statement, a press release. Okay. And, and when you were asked to do that, where did you go for your information to write? Uh, my first, the first thing I did was I called Sergeant Watson okay. um, because the news media had sent me a clip of the video and I couldn't tell who was in the video. I knew it was plainclothes officers, so I called Sergeant Watson and said, hey, I've got to send a video. Uh, can you tell me what happened? Tell me about it. Is this us? So that was my first source of information. Then I responded to the law center. I was not even technically in the city limits at the time. I was down at our range working on a busted water line. So I arrived at the law center, and then I went to the command area, which was in the major's conference room. Um, our command staff was in there. I talked to them, and then that's when we discussed it, and I was told whenever I get the information, put out a press release uh, as soon as I can on the information I was able to obtain. So I then went to my desk in my office and started pulling up the call history to see what was in the dispatch notes in our CAD and to monitor the names of those involved and the report progress. Okay. And when you say monitor the report progress, how do you do that? So we have our, our reporting system, which is called Central Square. It was called Zerker at the time, but uh, it's now Central Square. And so what I do is I go in there and I can see the sections of the report being filled out as it's in, in real time. And so that's what I was doing. Okay. And who was preparing this report? As far as I know, Officer Moreno was. Um, the report was under his login with his name uh, for the draft. Okay. Did you communicate with him throughout the day as he was preparing this report? I called Officer Moreno um, at one time, but he was busy dealing with the situation, so I did not get through to him on the phone. Later, I saw him in the hallway, and he said, Hey, Lieutenant, you had called me. And I said, Yeah, I did, but Sergeant Watson came and met with me and gave me the information I was going to ask from you. But you were aware he was working on the report? Yes, I was. And you could monitor his progress on the, on the preparation? I could monitor the progress on the report, yes. All right. And, and during what time period are we spanning here while you're, while you're monitoring this and the police force is being prepared? <clears throat> the incident started around 2 o'clock at the gas station. This is probably an hour and a half, two hours later that I arrived back at the law center to start looking and seeing what was going on. Um, I think I can completed a press release around six hours afterwards. Okay. So that evening, after that, 9, 10 o'clock, somewhere in there? No, it was before 9 o'clock, I believe. I don't have the time stamps. <coughs> okay, several hours later. It would be several hours later, yeah. And, and you drafted the press release. I did draft the press release, yes. what was the, the, the significant source of information for that for press release? There would be three things. The report, the narrative from the report, there would be the video that was circulating social media that was being watched and shared in the command post that had already been shared with me, and then the information that I was being told from the command staff um, and Sergeant Watson when I had talked to him. Okay. So um, would you say that the bulk of the information came from one source? Mm, for the most part, the CAD and the report area, yeah, from Zerker. All right. Do you have a copy of that report with you, the one that was submitted as complete? I have a copy of the narrative. Um, 
Yes, I've got the narratives here um, as I watch some of them in real time. Um, this would be the final narrative that was submitted and approved. And that's just the narrative portion. Is this the narrative you said approved? I'm talking about the one you relied on that night. That would be this one. That would be the narrative that was last completed under Officer Moreno's name that Sergeant Watson came to my office and said, this is the last narrative, this is it, this is the report. Okay, so this is the report you read as you're drafting the... Record. Yes, sir. Let me show you a copy of the narrative as it is on Zerker. Who does it say the primary narrative is by? Jonathan Moreno. And who logged in to create that narrative? It would have been Jonathan Moreno to start it, yes. Do people routinely log in under other people's names to create narratives and write incident reports? No. Brought, which is just a Word document, copy and paste, but this is the actual narrative and I would submit it as admissible as a statement by the defendant. Any objection? Same objection, Your Honor. Yeah. All right, I'm going to overrule that. This is evidence. <coughs> Anything else to do with this case at this point in time? After this was your primary responsibility that day was writing this report? Yes, my father passed away and I left town. log there that uh, shows the people who access that report. Is, is, that, is, that, is that what that shows? Yeah, this looks like a Zerka audit trail from the report. Okay. Can you count how many names appear on that report uh, that show who accessed Mr. Moreno's notes? How many people viewed it? Because <coughs> that's what I need. Sure. All right. So when it says view, print preview and all, um, <coughs> that is people who are looking at it to read it and possibly look at it. Now, modify is where something was changed. Do, are there a number of names that appear on that list that modified the report? Okay, so one, two, three, four, counting Officer Marinos, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, nine. So those modifications are where people went in and changed something on the report, is that correct? It could be a change or an addition, yes. Okay. And those eight or nine people are all Rock Hill Police Department officers? No, sir. Okay. Uh, I did notice one I know of was a records clerk. Okay. So I, without seeing what actually was modified, I can't tell you, but I know one was a records, rec but, rec yeah. records clerk. But other people, other than Officer Moreno, modified this report? That's what it shows, yes. Okay. And then... Anything else on redraft? Yes, Your Honor. Those modifications, when were they made? I would have to look back at the audit trail. I have a copy here. That's 623. Who was working on it on June 23rd? <coughs> All right, so what do you want me to cover uh, now? Just, I'm just focused on the statement because I'm only in. Okay, I've got the creation of it at 1605 hours. Which is military time for? 405, 405. p.m. All right. And so I've got him opening it up, and then I've got, I do have modifications to the report um, between that day on, and that time until my press release went out, and it shows other names on the modification. Okay, and, and who was the final person on this? And for the drafting. For the drafting? Yes. Let me see what you're looking at so I can. So if we start here. Okay. Right here. This rent was created. Okay. We got a modification here. There's a modification by the records clerk. You keep going up. There's another one. Okay. And then all these are him. There's one showing there. Those are some of those are views, right? Well, some of them like are views. Jonathan Clements at 1736 is but just a view. Yeah. 1734 is a modification. And what can cause a modification? Um, adding something to the report, changing the report. Sometimes, if you open up the narrative um, to review it and look at it, <clears throat> if you happen to open it up and hit a space bar and don't change anything, it will populate as a, a modification. Okay. Um, or if it's an autosave from the last person working on it, it might show a modification. Without seeing the actual in-depth what was yeah. done, I can't say. Okay. But numerous things can cause that. Okay. Um, but so who did the vast majority of modifications to this report? Uh, this day on the 23rd would be Jonathan Moreno. Okay. And when was the report, what does it say that it was the final modification by Moreno? What time was that? that the was one that you looked at, the report you looked at to do the press release. It was, it might be closer to this, uh, seven, 7.25 p.m. Okay. And, the, and that was? On the 23rd, 7.25 p.m. By which, by who? Jonathan Moreno. Okay. Because I viewed it on, I viewed it at 7.45. Okay. And you showed me a minute ago, um, And I believe you would agree the 725 uh, modification was the last modification of the day. It goes up to 624 after that. Yes, that would have been the last modification there were some, for that day. Some views and some prints, but they yes. were most there. So the last person to. Yes. And at some point, did you become aware that it had been finished? So you knew yes. you could rely on it? Sergeant Watson came to my office and told me that the report was finished. And so then. When he came in, we read it together. I asked him a couple of questions about it, um, refreshed my computer to make sure it was the most current version. He said, yes, this is it. Okay. And then you brought with you the first document you showed me that the final narrative, the one that's marked final.
final narrative? Yes, this one. Yeah. Um, Mr. Reeves was asking you about other people changing this. Ultimately, the final narrative is, is that substantially different than the original? Yes. And who did the final narrative on that? Who entered it? My understanding is Sergeant Kenny entered that narrative because it was under his name. 